Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous, and here is her story. Hi, Ollie. I wanted to thank you so much for your channel. As I listen to your story and others, it sparks so many memories. I watched the one where you talk about no contact triggers and skinny dipping, and that was what finally made me decide made made me decide to try to type up a coherent email with donation. Oh, that's an old one. The skinny dipping that you're talking about. Well, shit. Are you talking about the skin? My father's obsession with seeing my mom's sister naked skinny dipping or the skinny dipping in their friend's pool where they were having a fucking sex party skinny dipping. I don't know. There's so much of it in my past. So thanks. I had completely forgot about the skinning, dipping, nude beach stuff that I was exposed to. When I was six-ish, my mom met a man who became my stepfather. He was weird, but I think more of an enabler. They always had weird, loud sex. I was on the other side of the house, so it was obviously done to make me feel uncomfy. As a child, it just made me freeze. I have, I have, his, I have sexual abuse in my history, so it kind of does that to me. The abuse wasn't by anyone in my household, but an outsider. I learned to dissociate badly in those episodes, so it was my coping skill that I am used to most often. <clears throat> so much comes back when I start to write about this, but it's hard not to backtrack with earlier memories. Suffice it to say that before she ever ended up with the stepdad, there was already weird boundary violations going on. When I was very little, I'd always bathe I'd always bathe in her dirty bath water when getting ready for daycare. I was also medicated for a supposed seizure disorder and its known side effect is hair growth in unwanted places, let's just say. After I started this med, I had this change. I was five or six ish five or six ish. She went through a phase where I had to go through the dumb exercise, had to go to the dumb exercise classes with her after work. And that meant I also had a shower in front of other women. Jeez. Since I already had a complex about all the changes to my not very ready body, this was extremely stressful and embarrassing to me. She always told me no one was looking and no one cared. But it certainly was her that didn't care. And she loved that I hated it. Of course they do. And believe me, people care. Adults don't want to be around naked children in a shower. They don't. They don't. She got a sexual charge out of it. Okay, did you ever have a seizure? This supposed seizure disorder? Or did she look into how to make hair grow on it? Ugh. This experience, along with the earlier sexual molestation, has given me body issues for life. It took me a very long time to understand that she did this on purpose, that she enjoyed all of my distress. It's a type of pain that I don't know you ever recover from knowing your own birth giver is an evil, sadistic cunt, you know? Yeah, that's the worst of it. I mean, I was touched by strangers and this and 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 and, and her but this stuff was the worst of it the, the this 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 outward fucking display of sexuality to embarrass you and then to just show off your body to other people which they did to my which she did to my brother when he had to be recircumcised i think at like 9 Showing his fucking dick to anybody who wanted to look at it. Making him show it. <laughs> yeah, you weren't sexually abused though, Precious, right? Right, right. Anyhow, both of my parents were weird about body boundary sex stuff. There was the noisy, absolutely obnoxious sex having and the constant nakedness that I could not be upset by. That was a no-no. You're just uptight about it because 
insert insane narc reasoning and you just need to chill out grow up get over it no i was a child and this shit has left me with issues that i have yet that i have to untangle until i die yeah you're gonna have sexual issues for the rest of your life it's just it's just what they do because they have to be such fucking perverts they have to be so and i it sounds to me like they're baby boomers Sounds to me it's about it's about that about that time, right? Right? And you got the hang ups, right? The problem with the narciss the, the pervert narcissistic parent is okay, the real is they want to show their children. They want their children to be exposed to all of it. My father left the videotape of them at their fuck party in their neighbor's, in their friend's pool, in the VCR, and told me and my brother as I was, as they were going out for the night, hey, go watch, go watch a movie in the VCR. Left it there. Told us, oh yeah, there's a movie in there. I thought it was like Back to the Future or something. Phew. Boy, I wish I had a time machine then. Boy, don't we wish we had a DeLorean time machine at that point, precious, huh? <sighs> Maybe we could get a time machine to run on fucking vodka. And porn. How about that? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I know. And like this is bugging me because I know these people. Like I'm not personally, but I know what they're about. And I know what this girl has gone through. I know it. I know her misery. I know her shame. I know her issues. I know that fucking helplessness. Of them taking over your body and trying to control it for, for everybody to see. I, fuck off. My mother, now now I just remembered, because my mother, when we were on the beach, I can't even believe I still love the beach, but my mother used to be obsessed with sand in my bathing suit. So she was constantly, when I was a kid, trying to pull my pants down, my bathing suit down on the fucking beach. Oh, no, everybody does. Fuck you, not everybody does. Get off me. Get off me. But of course a small child can't say that because the child is the problem and the intimidation and calculated payback, extra nudity, weirdness just intensifies. Yeah. Yeah, it gets worse. The more you protest, the worse they get. The more naked they get. And there was plenty of that ever dreaded skinny dipping and later on nude beaching. Being raised by hippie boomers, this is an absolute must. Your video made me remember that, which, may, which also made me remember the many times I was encouraged to undress and swim naked with, with a button of other naked hippies. With a, oh, I'm sorry, with a butt ton of other naked hippies who obviously didn't think about modesty or modeling appropriate body boundaries, sexual habits. Gee, I don't know, wonder, I, I wonder why there's commercials on TV that one in fucking 20 fucking baby boomers have, have hep C. I wonder why. I wonder why. You could see a fucking baby boomer Viagra commercial followed up by a hep C commercial, followed up by God knows what other fucking commercial for these goddamn scumbags. Ugh. Ugh. Man, fuck these people. I agree. One time I had to spend six hours in a car with my mom being screamed at because she had an all-nighter, crazy loud sex session with the stepdad. stepdad. Again, as a child, you just have to take it. God fucking forbid you ask your own mother to be a decent person. 
or take a goddamn or take the picture of you in lingerie off the fucking refrigerator. God forbid that. That was a horrible experience and it's seared in my brain. It would have taken her all of five minutes to shower off. But no. Instead, I spent six hours trapped in a car with her sex smells, with her sex smells being screamed at because it was natural and I just hated sex. I mean, I was maybe all of seven at the time. I remind you, we were in the car down on Long Beach Island. It was my parents and my aunt and uncle, my Aunt Jenny and my Uncle Mario. And we were going out for ice cream and we wanted ice cream. And as a kid, I always loved soft ice cream. And my mother made this thing in the car like, you want soft? Oh, you want soft? You like soft? You're soft? It's like, we're going to get hard ice cream. Yeah. You go, we'll take you to get soft and then we'll all get hard. We'll get that hard, right? We want that hard. And I couldn't have been more than seven at the time myself. And I'm like, Stop it. What? 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 I know what you're doing. She's like, what? I'm like, you're being, I said, you're being disgusting. How dare you accuse me of being, what, for ice cream? There's something wrong with you. Because I said hard. We're getting hard. We're getting, she couldn't stop. You know what they're fucking doing. And they do it anyway. Wow, you're triggering the shit out of me here. I was so fucked up about my body. Okay? For the first, I'd say, year I, I was getting hair on my body, I was pulling it out with tweezers and cutting it with a pocket knife because I didn't want her to see it. I was pulling arm, I was pulling armpit hair out because I didn't want him to say it. <sighs> Fucking savages. As I got older, it just got weirder. They were boomers. So, of course, deodorant was evil. Many times my stepfather would blow into my face as if I got a little too close to his stinky pits. Who does that to a child? Whack jobs is the only answer I have. When I got my period, it took days to tell my mom, and when I did, I immediately regretted it. She got really excited and started telling me it was beautiful and how I was a woman. Now, this is why I was pulling body hair out of me. This is why I was pulling armpit hair out from an... I couldn't use a razor because, like, I felt like I had this fucking pocket knife that I would use, and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even touch. I wouldn't, couldn't buy a razor. I wasn't going to use one of my father's because then that would have fucking clued him off that something was up. She got really excited and started telling me it was beautiful and I was a woman now. I didn't feel beautiful. I felt gross. And like this thing was going to burden my life. And I didn't want to be grown up or a woman. I wanted to be 11. I, I understand. That's why I was... I, I, yeah. Yeah, I get it. The weird part was, after she got all sappy over that in front of my stepfather, the combo had to be done this way, I guess, because fuck personal space and boundaries, am I right? I asked for a bra. She refused at first to buy me one. But I'm, but I'm a big old grown-up woman now, remember? Not so much. I had to beg for a training bra, and even then, this dumb bitch buys me a camisole with lace and everything. What the fuck? Because she was trying to sexualize you. She wanted she wanted these guys to see your see your boobs, see your nipples, see your bra list. So when that didn't work, she got you some fucking over sexualized laced up bra. The next best thing. 
when I was old enough to actually start attracting and wanting boys' attention, the sex talk came. I wasn't like I didn't know anything about sex. Mom was forever telling me about it. The only... It's the only really good it's only really good when you're with someone you love and some other nonsense like no 5-year-old needs to know this. I talked the talk consisted of don't get pregnant which is beyond infuriating because she was knocked up at age 13 way back in the day. I came way later and was her last. Oh, so she just couldn't stop fucking She would listen in on my phone calls and go through my room to find out if I was getting freaky with boys. I wasn't. For someone who was in so into free sex and drugs motto, she was certainly intent on making sure I wasn't a whore. The entire thing is bananas. When I was a teen, I could not lock the bathroom door. If I did, she immediately needed something and threw an elp- epic meltdown fit if she couldn't access the bathroom right now. You know what that was like? This is my house, and if you're going to be an ungrateful blat, brat, then leave. Really, be free love baby boomer. Isn't it amazing? This is the fucking typical hypocrisy of your typical fucking baby boomer. Fucking and sucking all over fucking town, right? But she wants to blow in and disrespect everybody else's boundary, you know? So I stopped locking the door to severe to swer- to swerve the constant drama but that only led to her walking in the bathroom whenever she wanted a thing which funny enough was when I when I, when I was in it it didn't matter what I was doing in the bathroom she'd walk right in the fighting stopped but the ignoring me like I didn't even exist followed when I was 16 I was dragged out of bed one morning because she insisted I had seduced and slept with my own stepdad. It was so early and I was so disoriented that I could not comprehend the convo at first. My non-answer was taken as a commission of guilt. I know I know I protested because it was a lie, but in the court of the narc you're always going to be guilty. It was only much later in my life while discussing the memory with the nurse that she asked me if my stepdad was present. I answered yes, and she made this face. I didn't catch on right away, so she asked me if he came to my defense. He said nothing. It still took me a minute to comprehend what this meant. My only reply was, oh, yeah, it means it was bullshit. Your stepfather let you get fucking accused of this shit and didn't stop your mother from beating the shit? Like, what? The apex of this fuckery has to be what happened when I was around 13, though. One day, my stepdad's friend shows up at our house. He was there on business, told my mom that he had an all-expense-paid seminar thing out in a touristy place close to where we lived. She told me I should go. By that time, I was so depressed that I wanted nothing to do with anyone. I told her no and we fought for days. She screamed at me for days, telling me he was just being kind and I was embarrassing her by not going. Then one day he left and a gaggle of cops showed up at our house. Must have been 20 cops everywhere, plain clothes, uniformed detectives. He was apparently on the run from felony rape charges in our home state. Again, it took me years to understand how fucked up this really was. You'd have been dead. You'd have been dead. I have a daughter and it wasn't until the memory came to the surface that I thought of it in terms of my own kid. Absolutely under no circumstance would I allow my 12-year-old daughter to go anywhere with a week with a man with a man my age. He'd have, about, he'd have about 10 seconds to get gone before he was leaving the house in an ambulance. Do you understand? This guy was on the run where they're sending that many cops. That means he's dangerous. He would have taken you, probably raped you, and killed you. Because they get desperate at that point. But the baby boomer, they're so free love and so open and so whatever. Go with anyone. Go ahead. Go with anyone.
The guys who did it to me, my mother met them at fucking ShopRite. Just right there on the spot. Yeah, come over and watch my fucking five-year-old. Don't know you, just some gay guy working at ShopRite. Yeah, invite your friends over. Sight unseen. That's the baby boomer for you. That's your free love baby boomer. I have never received so much as an apology for literally being pawned off to a pedo running from federal rape charges for raping his own children. I'll wrap it up there, but I really want to state that these people aren't out of control, misguided, or ignorant. They are evil incarnate. To many of us raised by them, and despite the red flag and red flags everywhere, no one bothers to intercede. Thank you, Ollie, for what you do. I don't know if I need advice here. I'm no contact and in therapy, but I do welcome any input from you. Anonymous. There's no advice I can give to you at this point other than don't go back. The only thing I could tell you, Anonymous, is I understand your story. 100 percent we're basically raised by the same type of fucking people there's your baby boomer generation it's not every baby boomer but this is what went on this is where your free love fucking hip hop all your bullshit led to and these people are still around making fucking trouble making trouble trying to be sexy at 80 if you could follow any of my baby boomer stuff they're demons they're perverts they're sexual they're they're, they're, they're sexual sycophants i mean there's just not enough words to put on this fucking generation on these people there's just not enough The patterns of behavior are exactly the same between, you know, how many stories are like this with the porn and the overt sexuality and in your face about it and hearing them have sex and being served up to others, all of it. They're not even special. They're just generational fucking sociopaths. So there you have it, everybody. Another baby boomer video. So, thank you, Anonymous, for your contribution and your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it successful, growing, and surviving because this channel lasts 100% on contributions from all of you guys. Without you, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.